Coming to you from deep inside the bowels of a great big empty. Get ready for another episode of The Home Defense Show with Skip Coriel. Hello, American families. Welcome to this week's episode of The Home Defense Show. I'm your host, Skip Coriel. And if you love your family, care about them deeply, and want to learn how to protect them in every facet of your life, then you've come to the right place. We got a great show for you today, and I know that you're going to love it. Later on in segments two and three, we're going to be speaking with Terry Stock. She is the president of Second Amendment March. That's a national organization that I founded back in 2009, and we've been running rallies all over the country ever since then. Going to have a great time with Terry. She's always a lot of fun. And then, boy, what else? Oh, I needed to announce John Correa will be at Freedom Firearms in Battle Creek, Michigan. That's Joel Fulton's uh, gun store and indoor gun range. He will be there next Friday, April 27. John will be giving a three-hour seminar on April 27th all about everything that he's learned from watching all of these video uh, gunfights and knifings and attacks that he has witnessed. Um, that should be pretty good. I will be attending that as well. And then on April 28, John will be teaching an eight-hour tactical class, which I will be attending that as well. It should be fun, and I'm very excited about learning from John Korea from Active Self-Protection. Spring has finally come to the Great White North. We had snow right up till a couple of days ago, but now it's warmed up. It got up to like 50 degrees today, and the 10-day forecast looks wonderful. Of course, I'm looking forward to morel hunting season. And if you recall last year, I took you out into the woods, a live broadcast, hunting morels, and I educated you about that, and we ran across... Uh, the dreaded Sasquatch mushroom, um, but we did prevail. You can go back into a, a year ago, check our uh, former episodes, and you can listen to that one. It was one of our most popular episodes because it entailed actual gunfire in the woods. So check that out as uh, well. Oh, what else is going on? Oh, we have 30 new baby chicks. We need to replenish our, our laying hens. So we've got uh, 30 chicks, actually 27 now. Three of them died. Uh, they just did not survive the shipping process coming from Pennsylvania. Uh, that's always sad for the, the little kids because, you know, Amethyst and Phoenix, they like to hold them and give them names, and then, <laughs> then they die. That's the way it is. Part of growing up is learning about life and learning about death. My family and I planted 70 Norway spruce trees today on our property. We've just got 20 acres, but we planted 70 of those trees all over the property. My, my wife was happy about that. She grew up over in the Pacific Northwest where they have a lot of conifers and it's mostly deciduous here in our area, but I thought, hey, 70 Norway spruce trees for my wife, whom I love, it's a small price for happiness. So, that's what's going on in my life. Just looking forward to spring. The asparagus will be coming up here pretty soon. I see the rhubarb is already starting to sprout up. We've got daffodils, you name it. Spring is in the air, and I'm a happy boy. All right, let's check out the news in this segment here. You know, you hear a lot about AR-15s these days, how deadly they are, how they're military-grade uh, weapons and, and all this stuff. Of course, you and I know different. The military does not carry AR-15s. They carry uh, M4s, uh, which would be uh, fully automatic or three-round burst machine guns. We've got an article here out of Florida. Five charged in Baker County home invasion turned deadly shootout. Deputies say the home invasion was fueled by a social media feud. And that's 
one good reason to not have social media feuds because they don't always remain virtual. This is from News 4 and out of Jacksonville. Deputies arrested five people, two of them teens, after a home invasion Sunday in Glen St. Mary escalated into a deadly shootout, according to the Baker County Sheriff's Office. The Sheriff's Office said the five were among seven masked individuals armed with guns to barge into a mobile home on County Road 125 about 4 a.m. to confront four people staying there over a feud. Do you think seven armed men is enough to take one mobile home? Maybe not. The feud was fueled by derogatory and threatening rhetoric between the two groups on social media platforms and eventually escalated to this shooting, the sheriff's office wrote. Startled awake by the commotion, those inside the home grabbed weapons and then traded gunfire with the intruders. Three of the intruders were shot, one of them fatally, deputies said. Corey Lorimore, 18, Williams, William Lorimore, 24, and an unidentified 16-year-old were taken to area hospitals where the younger Lorimore was pronounced dead. The sheriff's office said the 16-year-old is currently receiving treatment at UF Health Jacksonville while the older Lorimore was treated and then taken to the Duval County Jail. Under arrest are William Lorimore, 24, Joseph Albino, 24, Zachary Bell, 20, Christian Watkins, 19, and Caden Lorimore, 15. They are charged with home invasion, but additional charges are possible. Well, people are always asking, why do you need an AR-15 for home defense? Well, I think that's one reason. When someone breaks into your house, they don't always come alone. A lot of times they have an accomplice or they'll have two or three or four or five people simply because they're going to take all the valuables from your home. And this is not a one-person job. Most of the invaders are there simply to haul out all of your assets. And that's why you need a 30-round magazine. Personally, I like a... I, I have got my AR-15 set up with an EOTech. I've got a, a laser sight on it. I've got a tactical flashlight. 30-round um, magazine. Just everything I need to protect myself and my family. Think about it, folks. If you knew at 5 o'clock today that five men were going to attack your house, would you choose your handgun or an AR-15 with a 30-round magazine? I think you would choose the AR. I certainly would. Okay, what else do we have here? Oh, here's a, here's a good one. This one was funny. Man eats underwear to beat breathalyzer test. <laughs> uh, how much did this guy have to drink? Apparently way too much. Uh, this was by Darcy Rickard of The Advocate. Not sure where that's at. Somewhere in Stetler. An 18-year-old Stetler man tried to eat his underwear in the hope that the cotton fabric would absorb alcohol before he took a breathalyzer test. Provincial court heard this week. David Zerflu was subsequently acquitted of a charge of impaired driving because he blew .08 the legal limit. Well, maybe, maybe dirty underwear does a good job of masking alcohol content. Who knows? But the testimony broke up people in, in Judge David McNaughton's provincial court here Thursday afternoon. Mr. Zerflu was collared by RCMP. I think this must be in Canada. Royal Canadian Mounted Police, Constable Bill Robinson, after he ran from his vehicle, which had been seen weaving down the highway. While sitting in the back of the patrol car, Mr. Zerflu tried to eat his shorts, Constable Robinson told the court. Mr. Zerflu said he ripped the crotch out of his shorts, <laughs> stuffed the fabric in his mouth, and then spit it out. <laughs> A class of law students from William E. Hay Composite High School were in court as observers. They were removed by the teacher when testimony enlivened the proceedings. The grade 11 and 12 students had difficulty maintaining composure. <laughs> 
quote, people were leaving the courtroom with tears in their eyes, trying not to laugh, said Constable Peter McFarland. <laughs> well, it takes all different sorts to make up a world, doesn't it, folks? <laughs> all right. Well, okay. Again, we've got uh, Terry Stock coming up, Second Amendment March. We have the, the annual Second Amendment March here in Michigan at the Lansing State Capitol on June 20th. That looks like it's going to be a really big event this year, bigger than in years past. Uh, interest in the Second Amendment is definitely heightened on both sides of the aisle. Um, and Terry is going to tell us all about that. She is, you know, up to her neck organizing that march right now. And she'll give us all the details and the prospect of what's going to happen and how you can get involved as well. So when we come back, we'll be checking that out with Terry Stock. For the next two minutes, go ahead and take a break. Check out firearmslegal.com slash Midwest Tactical. See how to protect your family from the criminal justice system. And then go to elitefirearms.us and see how Larry Jackson can help your family choose the right firearms to protect your home. Okay, folks, when we come back, Terry Stock from Second Amendment March. This is Skip Coriel on the Home Defense Show. Don't go anywhere. We will be right back. My name is Siege Coriel. Welcome to the Home Defense Show with my dad, Skip Coriel. Don't go nowhere. We'll be right back. This is Skip Coriel from the Home Defense Show, and I want you to have the very best handgun that money can buy. And that's why we recommend you visit Larry Jackson at Elite Firearms and Training. As a concealed carry instructor, I see people every week out on the range with guns they can't shoot properly because they didn't know what to buy. That will never happen at Elite Firearms and Training. Larry Jackson will personally fit you with your very own personal defense pistol. So call Larry Jackson today at 616-299-8715 or visit EliteFirearms.us. This is Colonel Danny Gillum. I host Front Lines of Freedom, a weekly syndicated military talk radio show. One of my co-hosts is Skip Coriel, the host of this show. We cover things that impact military and veteran communities, and we do it from the veteran's perspective. The show is broadcast across the nation and is also available as a podcast on our website, frontlinesoffreedom.com. Please join Skip and me weekly on Frontlines of Freedom. Okay, folks, welcome back to the Home Defense Show. This is your host, Skip Coriel. We are speaking now with Terry Stock, president of the Second Amendment March. Terry, welcome to the Home Defense Show. Thanks, Skip. It's always nice to be here. You know, it's nice of you to say that. I know you're lying, but that's okay. I, you know, as long <laughs> <laughs> you know, I shouldn't talk like this because most people don't know, you know, our relationship. I mean, we we bonded like 10 years ago when we were doing this, the first Second Amendment march. It was like being in a war zone in a battle together. So, you know, it's... Uh, you know, I can joke with you, and, and I certainly have in the past. And yeah. it's okay if you hang up on me. It is I, okay. I know I went too far if you if you hung up on me. But, <laughs> <Nope>. anyways, <laughs> Terry, for the the benefit of people who don't know you yet, why don't you just tell people a little bit about yourself? Who is Terry Stock? Oh gosh, I'll give you the thirty second elevator pitch. Um, <laughs> well. I'm a mom of two uh, boys, both avid hockey players, and um, I work full-time, of course, and I'm busy when I'm not carting them around being a taxi driver and a cook and a maid and all the other things that go along with being a mom. Um, I I fit in a little time there to go to the gym, and uh, as you mentioned, I've been working with Second Amendment March, which you founded uh, back in 2009. That's when we became friends, and uh, I've been working with that ever since. Yeah, isn't that amazing that it's been that long? Jeez, I just... it seems like yesterday that you were that you sent out that email calling for somebody to put together a website for you. It really seems like yesterday. 
<laughs> but it wasn't. Um, I've got a few gray hairs. Most of the gray hairs I got during that first year, I think. But uh, I think so. <laughs> you did a great job building that first website. I definitely, you know, the mark of a good manager is recognizing talent and putting the right people with the right job. And boy, oh, well, thank you. You know, it it just turned out fantastic. I'm, I I don't really have any regrets from the Second Amendment March. You know, I I don't either. I had so much fun doing that, and um, I ended up. At the time, I was part-time working outside of the home and part-time still raising my kids at home, and um, I ended up leaving that part-time job so I could devote all of my time, all of my spare time, to organizing that march with you, and I learned so much in that one year just across so many disciplines of marketing and social media and negotiating and public relations. I mean, you name it, we did it. Yeah, you know, there there was so much for us to learn because neither one of us really had done anything like this before. Right. I mean, a national level event. I mean, we had to we had to create nonprofit organizations, I think state and national level nonprofits and you know, we you had to negotiate with the National Park Service, you know. Oh, that was fun. Oh, yes, and just all kinds of stuff that, you know, you'd be surprised, all the details that have to be done on an event that's that big. You know, I suppose, right. you know, if we had like $2 million, it would probably be a lot easier, <laughs> but we, right? we kind of did like a pay-as-you-go kind of a thing. It's like, okay, this is going to cost $10,000. Where are we going to get that? Let's figure that out. Then we'd have to go earn the money. And then we could, you know, pay for the stage or the band or, or whatever. But. Right, or or the porta johns. Remember when we ended up, um, we allowed people to sponsor. I think I think it was sponsor a porta john, <laughs> yes. and for fifty dollars or a hundred dollars. And I think we actually put their names on it. This porta john sponsored by John Smith, you yeah. know, or something like that. <laughs> Oh, you have to get creative to get people to uh, donate. Yes. Yeah, we sure did. And I, um, Brian, Brian Jeffs, you know, he's uh, mm -hmm. one of the co-founders of Michigan Open Carry. But he uh, he worked really hard at earning money. He, w he was really good at at that that he, kind of a thing. So um, He is very good at that. He's a real outgoing guy, and um, he's not shy about asking. So, yeah, he, he was instrumental in that. And I, and I loved working with Brian, and I, and I love working with Brian now. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's a good team. It's really, it, it's really a great team. Well, you know, there, right now there is you and I and Brian Jeffs and then uh, Nathan, Nathan Nephew. He's, he's the newbie, uh, you know, to the group, but he's, he's our treasurer now. He's doing a, a, a pretty good job as well, so. Um, mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. he um, Nate is the treasurer. He did he redid the website, and um, he's been instrumental in helping with the coordinating. And, and he's always you know a nice voice of reason, and he's coordinating the auction, and uh, or not the auction, but um, you know coordinating some of the the logistics around that. Mm -hmm. uh, Michigan Gun Owners is actually coordinating the auction for us for that this year. Oh, but yeah, I mean, good. all around, it's just a great group that you know we all get along well and we all bring different talents and um, yeah, just fantastic. Every year it gets better and better. Well, we've been doing this well since 2010, so this is our eighth or ninth uh, event that we did, at least here in in Michigan. Um, yes. So why don't you t tell us uh, what is going on this year at the Second Amendment March? Right. So this year we did something a little bit different. Normally we have the march in either April or May. And um, for whatever reason, we decided this year to have it in June instead. And I think a lot of that had to do with just how quickly, you know, of course you have to reserve the capital grounds for any event and pay your fee. And um, even though we started planning this back in January or early February, a lot of the dates in April and May that we wanted were already full. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it just has a lot to do with the political climate this year. So we opted for June, and um, we said, you know, maybe, uh, you know, a lot every year 
Um, we have people say, well, why didn't you do it on a weekend? And we thought, well, maybe this year we will at least make some of the people happy by having it when it's warmer because we've been out there before in blizzard conditions. <laughs> yes, we have. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not really that disappointed that it's going to be in June. Mm-hmm. Um, but at any rate, it's going to be on Wednesday, June 20th on the east lawn of the state capitol in Lansing. And uh, it'll start at 10 a.m. and conclude around 2 p.m. Um, and we will have various speakers there. We have a fantastic band coming all the way from New York called Madison Rising. Um, some people may remember that a few years ago they um, had a, a, a fantastic rocked-out rendition of the Star Spangled Banner. Uh, so they're going to be joining us, and they're helping us to promote the event. Um, we also have, as always, a um, table there with vendors with various militia groups, and we've got uh, a gunsmith coming this year, and uh, let's see, CPL instructors, and and we have a table there. We have someone who specializes in concealed carry for the ladies and concealed carry clothing. Um, so that's kind of, you know, I, I personally like that because I like to draw more women into this mm-hmm. and get them more involved, so I, I'm really excited that we have that representation this year. And... We also have, um, backed by popular demand, our attorneys panel. Okay. And this is usually uh, three or four attorneys that um, are up there and available to answer questions about current legislation, um, which, as you know, we've had a couple of things this year. We had, There were a couple of cases that went before the Michigan Supreme Court. And uh, so they give updates on, on that as well as any questions they can answer about uh, Michigan gun law. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's going to be a really good time. And uh, it's, it's going to be a great time, and we're really excited about, about the interest that we're seeing on our Facebook page this year because it is just far and away uh, more interest than we've ever seen. We, we actually might break a record with attendance this year, Skip. Oh, you know, I would, I would love that, uh, especially in light of what's been happening uh, on the left side of the aisle as far as anti second amendment marches that are occurring all over the all over the country um you know and, and they they are being very very successful let's uh take a short break here and then we come back let's start out talking about that a little bit and then we will transition back into the march and some more positive stuff but Folks, we are speaking with Terry Stock, president of Second Amendment March, one of my favorite people. We've got a two-minute break here. While we're gone, go ahead and check out firearmslegal.com slash Midwest Tactical and see uh, what FLP can do uh, to help protect your family uh, against the criminal justice system. And then check out EliteFirearms.us and see how Larry Jackson can help your family choose the right firearm to protect your family. This is Skip Coriel on the Home Defense Show. Don't go anywhere. We will be right back. This is Phoenix Coriel on the Home Defense Show. Always use guns safely and wisely. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Hey, folks. I want to tell you about my book, Civilian Combat, the Concealed Carry Book. More and more people across the country are seeing the dangers in society and are deciding to carry concealed to protect themselves and their families. My new book lays it out step by step. It'll teach you how to protect and defend the ones you love. Get the benefit of 17 years of teaching experience and a lifetime of training for this important role in society and in your family. You can get Civilian Combat real easy. Just go to Amazon.com, search on Skip Coriel Civilian Combat, and it'll pop right up there. Don't put it off any longer. Get Civilian Combat, the concealed carry book by yours truly. Wouldn't it be wonderful if life was like the movies and the good guys always won? In today's world, if you're forced to use your firearm to protect yourself, you will need protection. Firearms Legal Protection is here for you. FLP provides you with seasoned, experienced attorneys that handle your criminal and civil matters as a result of you protecting yourself. 
FirearmsLegal.com provides its members with uncapped attorney's fees, bail bond protection, and coverage in all 50 states. We are not a reimbursement plan. You can access uncapped attorney's fees for as low as $10 a month. Firearms Legal members are provided with educational services, training videos, and access to our vast national attorney network. While you're protecting yourself, let Firearms Legal protect you. Listen up, folks. This is important. There are plenty of legal protection services out there, but none will protect you as well as Firearms Legal Protection. This is the one I use and the only one I recommend. Visit FirearmsLegal.com slash Midwest Tactical and protect your family now. Okay, folks, welcome back to the Home Defense Show. This is your host, Skip Coriel. We are continuing our discussion with Terry Stock, president of Second Amendment March. Terry, we were talking uh, about the anti-Second Amendment rallies when we closed. It, it, does it amaze you how vehement and how, actually it seems like they've been very, very successful at promoting their events and getting people to come out? Why do you think they've been so successful at, at doing that? Well, a couple of reasons, uh, and these are just my personal opinions and observations, but I, I feel it's because they have the platform for it. Um, they have uh, people like George Soros and, and others and, and the backing of the media behind them to really give them the exposure of this. And the um, the left typically are very, very good at organizing. And I, and I don't, I want to pause for a second and say I, I realize that Left does not mean anti-gun. What I'm talking about, we, you know, we have Democrats, Republicans, people from all walks of life that support the Second Amendment. So I don't mean to marginalize them or, or point them out to attack them. What I'm talking about here are, in general, people from the left who are anti-gun. Um, so I don't want to paint with too broad of a brush. But <clears throat> they're very, very good at organizing. And a lot of times with the pro-gun crowd and with with the right um they they mean well and they make these attempts at organizing but they can be very factioned oh right? yeah yeah so yeah so so that's what i think it is and that's really it and I, and I really think a lot of it has to do with the media like i said they they really have the backing and the voice of the media behind them because it makes for a great story mm-hmm. yeah you know it also helps if you've got five, six million dollars, too, I, I don't want to. I'm not saying that to, to give an, an excuse. Um, it's mm-hmm. just, boy, you and I both know how much money it takes to do something like that. And right. uh, this uh, David Hogg fellow, uh, you know, he he was a mouthpiece for for the left. So a high school student, I know darn well, a high school student didn't do in uh, three or four weeks what it took us almost a year and a half to do. Uh, I just, I know better than that because I know everything involved in it. Basically, you know, it's on record they had they had about five million dollars to throw that event together, and absolutely we, we had a tiny little fraction of that. Absolutely, uh, <clears throat> um, you know, they it it takes a lot of money to do something like that, and you know, the media would have us believe that that was all entirely student organized and student run, and just based on the event that we did with a few thousand people. Um, I, I just don't see how that can be the case, that, that this was completely student-run um, and not funded from somewhere. Yeah. Absolutely not. And, wh- and what I found interesting about it, too, is <clears throat> that the students were allowed to do this on school property dur- during school time. Of course, they say it under the guise of it being, uh, well, this is, a, this is a memorial. This is a remembrance. This is 17 minutes of of um, silence or respect or tributes to each of the, the students and, and faculty that were killed, which which I think is fine. I think that's fine. Um, but I don't think that that's truly what the intent was. There might have been some of that mixed in there, but to me it felt more political than that. Mm-hmm. I really wonder, and I actually wrote a letter to the superintendent of my son's school, and I asked him, you know, if my son had decided to demonstrate, uh, you know, to stage a pro Second Amendment um, demonstration on, you know, during on school property and during school hours, would he be afforded 
the same courtesy and the same opportunity to do so because you know as well as I do that, that students these days are getting in trouble for wearing the Gadsden flag t-shirts yeah. or even drawing a gun or chewing a Pop-Tart into the shape of a gun. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm not too sure that they would have been afforded the same opportunity. Did you get a response at all or, or not? I got no response. However, I was somewhat heartened by the fact that with the demonstrations that were occurring today, um, a couple of days ago, the superintendent did send out a very neutral email saying that the um, schools would not be participating um, because it was political in nature and the schools wanted to remain neutral on it. I'm, of course, I'm paraphrasing, but, mm-hmm. but um, it makes me wonder if maybe he got quite a few emails the first time around. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I hope that he did. You know, we talk about, right now, the the left, the anti-gun movement, they're very fired up. They, they, they can sense blood, and they're really going for the juggler here. They, they, I think they figure, you know what, with all these massacres going on, if we can't, you know, repeal the Second Amendment now, how can we ever do it? And they, they're very, very confident. They're almost rabid. And uh, mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't see them letting up. But one, one thing that I have noticed, you know, over the years, over the past decade, and it, it's not so much a complacency on the part of pro-gun people. Uh, I think there is that element. But uh, a lot of the pro-gun people, they they want to be left alone, <laughs> You know, just leave me alone. I don't want to get involved in politics. It's dirty. It's yucky. You know, I just I just want to go to my kid's soccer game and and uh, try and get the, the big promotion at work. They're working hard. And those are none of those are bad things. But, you know, the, the far left, they're, they're a usurper of all things left unattended. And if, and if we leave, um, you know, politics unattended they will take control, just like they did the media and higher education. We have to get involved, even though it's not tasteful. Um, we, we have to do that. And um, Let's get back to the, the Second Amendment march. You, you mentioned mm-hmm. Madison Rising. Um, are they, I'm assuming they're not bluegrass. They are not bluegrass. <laughs> they have a... <laughs> They have a decidedly um, rock sound to them, and um, they're, they're, you know, of course, you know, just like beauty is in the eye of the beholder, I guess great music is in the ear of the beholder, uh, I think they're fantastic. They um, really have a great sound. They really get the crowd energized. You know, they're, they're just a talented, talented group. Uh, so I think that we're, we're really, really excited to have them here. Um, they're very excited to come out and be a part of this event. They're really enthused about it. I think they're really going to get the crowd going. It's it's going to be a party, Skip. It's going to be a party. <laughs> All right. Um, will they be playing the Star Spangled Banner that you mentioned before? I hope so. I, I really hope so, since that's the song that um, is their claim to fame. So yeah. um, I haven't had a chance yet to really talk with them too much about their set and what they'll be performing, but um, they are known as America's Most Patriotic Rock Band. So um, I think they'll they'll probably throw quite a few... Uh, very patriotic songs in there. I think we should uh, talk to them about that. And when I say we, I mean you. So, yeah, of course. Yeah, <laughs> you enjoyed. should you I should did. go ahead and, and talk to them about that. You know, that was yeah. one of the one of the most wonderful things about organizing the Second Amendment March is having people like you uh, that actually do most of the work. Uh, <laughs> oh, for, stop you. You did all the media interviews. You did so much. You, you yeah, sell but, yourself short. But that's easy stuff. That's the easy stuff. Uh, you know, you you show up and they ask you questions, and you know, you you just talk to people. I mean, that's easy. But actually organizing stuff. Oh man, that's uh, that's that's hard work. You know, computer work, building websites, all that stuff. So, you know, don't don't sell your, yourself short on that. Um, well, thank you. I appreciate that. Okay. Uh, you mentioned uh, th- there seems to be more interest this year than in previous years. Uh, uh, h- how do we know that? Um, we have our past events that are still they're hidden, but I can still see them as an admin of the page, and I can um, do a comparison of years past of, of how many people have RSVP'd through our Facebook event page 
how many RSVP'd that they were going and how many RS, um, indicated that they were interested in going. To date, since 2013, when we started tracking this through a Facebook event page, the largest number of people that RSVP'd yes was right around, oh, probably 350, 360, somewhere around there, mm -hmm. with the number of people that were interested, just shy of 600. And this year... Uh, we have over 1,400 people now indicate that they will be attending. Oh, good. And over 8,000 people that indicated they are interested in attending. So, wow. you know, we're very excited about this. Um, it's just, it's gone crazy. People are talking about it uh, really across the country. I've had people contact me from Alaska, from Oregon, uh, Texas. We have... People that said, hey, I'm, I'm coming in and I'm making a vacation of it. I'm coming from Maryland. I'm coming from Tennessee. So people are coming from all over. Um, and, and they've actually, just so you know, Skip, before Warren, people have asked us to make this a national march. And I said, hey, you know, just because it's not in D.C. doesn't mean you can't come to Michigan. If you're going to travel <laughs> to D.C., you may as well come here. <laughs> you're right. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it doesn't, a national march does not have to take place in Washington. If we ever did another national march... I think one of the things we would do differently is we would get sponsors uh, up front before we uh, announce the event. You know, you have to know that you have the backing there first. And, you know, there are some things that, that I, I would do differently, and I'm sure you would as well. But, uh, you know, I'm encouraged that we have so many people uh, ready to do this. Even if we just get a fraction of those people, uh, what, what's the biggest event that we've had uh, at the state capitol? Do you recall? Um, at the state capitol, I'm terrible with estimating numbers. It's kind of like estimating distance. <laughs> I'm terrible. It could be a quarter mile, and I'll say it's four miles away. Um, but, but I think probably, oh, I probably, I think we've probably had about 500 there at our largest event. Okay, so it, we should definitely shatter that. You I know, think that's going to happen. I'm I'm optimistic. Well, uh, you know, I, I'm teaching almost every week uh, concealed carry classes, and I'm hammering it on Facebook and in my emails, my newsletters, and all that stuff, and all my students. So I hope that we really do that. Now, should people bring a gun with them to this event? So here's our take on that. We want people to do whatever makes them comfortable that falls within the law. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, we see everybody there. Some people don't carry, some people concealed carry, some people open carry. You'll see AR-15s, you'll see um, bolt-action rifles, you'll see just about anything there. Um, and that's okay. If you're legally carrying and that's what you want to do, then please do. Yeah. You know, that's one of the things that I love, and I know other people like it as well, come to this event and it's just you feel like you're doing something naughty. <laughs> you're at the state <laughs> capitol with an AR-15 slung on your back, and you're walking through the state capitol. And it's like there's no SWAT team. No one's putting your face down on the ground. Nobody's shooting you. You know, it's just a wonderful exercise of Second Amendment rights, of patriotism. And, you know, and it's it's that that one day out of the year where you can go there with hundreds of other uh, patriots, um, this year hopefully thousands, and and just exercise your Second Amendment rights at the state capitol. Uh, now, Terry, do we have any, we have a uh, an election coming up this fall, and we'll be electing a new governor. Um, we've never had Governor Snyder come to this uh, e event what about any of the gubernatorial candidates uh, for this fall? Do we ha have any of those uh, confirmed yet? We um, we have a couple of gubernatorial candidates that have expressed interest, and we are certainly looking at that, and likely we'll have uh, one or more there speaking. Um, it's not quite firmed up yet. Um, we want to make sure that we're kind of, you know, providing fair access and, and uh, discussing things along those lines. So I don't want to actually say who will or will not be there yet. You know, the, the board is still discussing that. So, um, but definitely we'll be, we'll be considering that. Well, the, the governor candidate that shows up with an AR-15 strapped to his back is going to get my vote. 
that's your vote. Yep. We'll, we'll see if that happens. <laughs> All right. Now, Terry, uh, we're about out of time here. But before we go, uh, will you tell people where they can go to find out more information about the march, but also what you want people to do to help spread the word? Absolutely. So you can go to our website at 2amarch.com, but you'll actually find more information and, and be able to join in on the discussion and get up-to-date uh, announcements on our speakers and different things going on with the march on our Facebook page. And if you go to P- Facebook, you can just search for Second Amendment March or at 2A March, and you'll find our page and then click on events and you'll find the 2018 Second Amendment March event. So that's where you can join in the t- discussion. Um, and also on our website, you can actually download our flyer. Even if you can't attend the march, we would really appreciate it if you would print out that flyer, take it to your local gun ranges, gun shops, um, and, and ask them to post it. In fact, I just did that last weekend at my local gun range, and they were more than happy to do so. So the more we can get this word out, the better. So everyone can do their part. And if they don't want to don't want to pass out flyers, they can always go to our Facebook page and look for the link for donations. Um, you know, it, this, it, it does take money to, even though Madison Rising is being very generous, we are, you know, we do still have to pay for them to get here from New York and put them up. So there are fees associated with that and with the tent rental and, and all kinds of things that people don't think about. So um, donations are always welcome and it allows us to continue bringing these events to people. Absolutely. All right. Now, that's 2amarch.com. That's the number 2amarch.com. And then again on Facebook, Second Amendment March. All right. Terry, thank you. Thank you very much for all that you're doing. Uh, I know you're working really hard along with the rest of the board members and with MGO and with MOC. Thanks again for all that you do. And we will uh, hit you up again here probably before June 20 to get an update. So thank you very much, Terry. No problem. See everybody there. All right. Okay, folks, this is Skip Corey on Home Defense Show. Got a two-minute break here. Check out our sponsors. But specifically go to 2amarch.com or on Facebook, Second Amendment March, and express your interest. Tell people you're coming. Uh, Download that flyer. Go ahead and help us spread the word. By all means, you should come there. You will have the time of your life and bring your whole family. Okay, folks, don't go anywhere. This is Skip Coriel on Home Defense Show. We will be right back. Welcome to my dad's Home Defense Radio Show. You're gonna love it. Hey folks, I want to tell you about my book, Civilian Combat, the Concealed Carry Book. More and more people across the country are seeing the dangers in society and are deciding to carry concealed to protect themselves and their families. My new book lays it out step by step. It'll teach you how to protect and defend the ones you love. Get the benefit of 17 years of teaching experience and a lifetime of training for this important role in society and in your family. You can get Civilian Combat real easy. Just go to Amazon.com, search on Skip Coriel Civilian Combat, and it'll pop right up there. Don't put it off any longer. Get Civilian Combat, the concealed carry book by yours truly, Skip Coriel. This is Colonel Danny Gillum. I host Front Lines of Freedom, a weekly syndicated military talk radio show. One of my co-hosts is Skip Coriel, the host of this show. We cover things that impact military and veteran communities, and we do it from the veteran's perspective. The show is broadcast across the nation and is also available as a podcast on our website, frontlinesoffreedom.com. Please join Skip and me weekly on Frontlines of Freedom. This is Skip Coriel from the Home Defense Show, and I want you to have the very best handgun that money can buy. And that's why we recommend you visit Larry Jackson at Elite Firearms and Training. As a concealed carry instructor, I see people every week out on the range with guns they can't shoot properly because they didn't know what to buy. That will never happen at Elite Firearms and Training. Larry Jackson will personally fit you with your very own personal defense pistol. So call Larry Jackson today at 616-299-8715 or visit EliteFirearms.us. Skip, it's Armed America Report time. What do we have today? All of us here at Frontlines of Freedom want our listeners to get trained and get armed in that order. 
We fully support the right to keep and bear arms for all law-abiding families, and we encourage you to find out about the laws governing use of deadly force in your state and follow them to the letter. And of course, don't forget to follow the rules of safety and common sense whenever you're carrying a firearm to protect the ones you love. What's the story this week, Colonel? Firearms can be an equalizer for the old and the outnumbered, as a recent defensive shooting in Pennsylvania illustrates. An 84-year-old Korean War veteran makes it a habit to sleep with a gun under his pillow so he can react quickly if he's threatened. The practice worked to his advantage in early December when two men conducted a late-night break-in at his home. The resident was awakened by the sound of the suspects bursting through his front door. When an assailant tried to grab him, the veteran fired, killing one of the intruders. A tussle with the other ensued with the gun being knocked out of the armed citizen's hand, and the bad guy fled before the owner could retrieve his handgun. Thanks, Colonel. This is just one more example of the courage and determination exhibited by our military veterans, not just in the line of duty while they were young, but also decades later in the autumn of their lives. While this 84-year-old Korean War vet was no spring chicken, he still had enough fight left in him to take on two younger men and to prevail with honor. Let me convey a message to all the young home intruders still in the prime of their lives. Yes, you are bigger, you're faster, and you're stronger. But stay away from the retired military veterans. Why? Because we're grumpy. Every morning we wake up, we ache in our joints, we ache in our bones, and just about every other place imaginable. The immortal words of the French philosopher René Descartes comes to mind. I think, therefore, I am. After I turned 60, I modified that philosophy just a tad, and now it reads, I hurt, therefore I am. So, don't mess with the old guys, because we're grumpy and impatient, and we just don't want to spend what little time we have left suffering the antics of fools trying to break into our house. Here's one safety tip I'd recommend to our listeners, though. You should avoid placing your pistol under your pillow. It's just too dangerous. In the heat of battle, waking up from a sound sleep, you just might grab the gun with a less-than-perfect grip and end up blowing your own head off. But hey, all's well that ends well, and this 84-year-old Korean War vet proved himself worthy of combat one more time. Frontlines of Freedom salutes this veteran and wishes him many more successful victories in his life. Thank you, Skip. Okay, folks, welcome back to the Home Defense Show. This is your host, Skip Coriel. How about that Terry Stock? She really is one of my favorite people. That woman works her butt off for this cause. She works hard for your Second Amendment rights. Now maybe it's time to work hard for your own Second Amendment rights. Maybe it's time for you to help us out a little bit. I could tell you some stories about Terry Stock, about Brian Jeffs, about Nathan Nephew, but I'm not going to. Why? <laughs> because they would tell you some stories about me, and, oh, their stories are probably better than mine. But, hey, you need to come to the march. It's going to be a great time. Uh, check it out on Facebook. If you're a member of Michigan Gun Owners or a member of Michigan Open Carry, you especially need to be helping us because you are partnering with Second Amendment March for this event, and we very much appreciate both of those groups. We couldn't do the march without you. You are equal partners with us in this endeavor. Okay, now here is the time you've all been waiting for where I tell you what I really think, as if I'd know how to do anything else. But hey, this is what I really think. Okay, patriots, it's time to get butt-ugly honest here about your attendance at the Second Amendment March. I know darn well you can attend. Anyone can attend, provided they plan ahead and make some sacrifices. Now, some of you say, hey, I have to work. You should hold this on a Saturday so I can come. And I just don't buy that excuse. If we held it on a weekend, then we'd be competing with weddings, graduation parties, fishing, the beach, family vacations, and a host of other things. 
And the bottom line is this. None of the people we want to communicate with are at the Capitol on a weekend, namely our state senators and our state representatives. We want to send a message to them that, yes, we are serious about our gun rights, and we're not going to let you cave in to the anti-gun pressure that's sweeping the country right now. So go ahead and take a vacation day, a sick day, a mental health day, whatever you want to call it, because it really is worth it. And if not now, then when? Are you going to wait for a SWAT team to come and break down your front door in the middle of the night and take away your guns? By then it's too late. You need to mobilize and get active now. Yeah, yeah, I understand that politics is dirty business and it's just not any fun to get involved with it. Sometimes getting involved in politics is like jumping into a cesspool and afterwards you have to take a bath with Bon Ami soap and a scrub brush. Let's face it, most of us don't like politicians. They don't have the best reputations for honesty. But I'm here to tell you, that if you and I don't get involved, if we don't stand up and take back the public discussion to be heard, to yell and scream and make our grievances known, then we will lose the day. And in the process, we will lose our rights. Politicians can be like cooked linguine. They bend back and forth away from pressure. They have tiny, skinny little spines and care most about what will get them reelected. What does a politician care about most? Power. And what will they do to retain that power? Almost anything. And that's exactly why you have to come to the Second Amendment March this year. Because the anti-gunners have already proven themselves. They are holding rallies all across the country. Drawing not just hundreds, not just thousands, not just tens of thousands, but hundreds of thousands of people. And all those people want to take away your guns. Okay, sure. I'll be the first to admit that they have the media on their side and millions of dollars. But can you tell me a time when that wasn't true? They've always been like that. I've never understood why the left can raise money and the right never seems to have two pennies to rub together. I know there are rich gun owners out there. I've met you. But they just don't seem to donate to the march. Most of our funds come from little people like you and I. Factory workers and cab drivers and farmers, teachers, little folks who donate only a few bucks, and even a few bucks hurts. But do what you can. If you're a rich man and you're waiting for some magical time to ante up and defend your rights, then you'd best do it now before it's too late, because the anti-gunners smell blood, and they're coming after us with both barrels, the media and money. If you've only got 20 bucks, then we want all of it. If you've got 100, then pony up. You need to attend the march. You need to print out the flyer and post it all over your hometown. You need to get on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and start talking about how you're going to attend the Second Amendment march on June 20th in Lansing, Michigan. Generate excitement. Talk about it. I recall in the very first Second Amendment march, I was terrible at fundraising. I hate asking people for money. It makes me feel all yucky. But here's what I've learned. If I don't ask you for money, then you don't pull out your wallet and give. And if you don't give, then we can't organize the event. We can't rent stages and sound systems and tents and banners. We can't buy permits. We can't pay for travel costs. And all those bills have to be paid before services are rendered. We can make this event the most well-attended, and the most successful in history, but not without your help. Terry and I talked about the candidates for governor who might be coming to the event. They need to see a strong, unified, pro-Second Amendment march, or they won't take us seriously. We all wanted Governor Snyder to sign the bill to abolish the pistol-free zones, you know, the zones where 85% of all victims die in mass shooting events, but he didn't do it. Instead, he vetoed that bill that would have saved lives and expanded our rights. Now we have another chance to elect a more pro-Second Amendment governor. But first, we have to get them to the event and show them all the people who will support them should they back our cause. Right now, all they're seeing is the banned guns signs, and all they can hear are the chants to repeal the right to keep and bear arms. Anti-gun noise will never serve us. 
but neither will pro-gun silence. If you want to be heard, if you want to expand your rights, then you have to come to the march, publicize it, donate to the cause. June 20th is the time, but the next two months is when you must help us do the prep work. If you don't help us get the word out, if you don't take that day off work, if you don't pry open that wallet and give, then this event will fail. The political candidates will take notice and will be in for another long four years of gun right famine. But it doesn't have to be that way. Please, folks, for posterity, for your kids, for your family, for the cause of freedom, please do all you can to advance this march. We need you and your country needs you. Go to 2amarch.com and click on the Donate button. Go to Facebook and search on Second Amendment March. Click on the button that says you'll be attending. Get involved. I know it's sacrifice. But if not now, then when? And that's what I really think. Well, folks, this is when the rubber meets the road time, isn't it? Think about it. What do you want? What do you want out of life? What do you want out of your politicians? Figure it out and make your demands known. If you don't, they won't know. And if they don't know, you won't get what you want. The squeaky wheel gets the grease. And what is squeakier than 5,000 people with guns on the lawn of the state capitol? (laughs) that's a lot of squeak that's a lot of noise and it will be heard but we got to come first right you got to make that sacrifice and folks i'm telling you oh man it is so much fun to walk into the state capitol with an ar-15 you know slung over your back or uh, a glock model 19 or your smith and wesson whatever your handgun of choice is on your side, and just walk. You feel like such a free man, like such a free woman, when you exercise that liberty, that God-given liberty, to defend yourself, to keep and bear arms. Folks, it doesn't get any better than that. I'll be there. I'll be in the big tent. I'll be signing my books, Civilian Combat, the Concealed Carry book. And I am trying, like the Dickens, to finish the fourth book in the God Virus series, The Blind Man's Rage. I'm writing every day. I'm brainstorming. I'm trying to figure out how to defeat the blind man. Some of you don't know what I'm talking about. If you don't, go on Amazon.com and do a search on Skip Coriel, the God Virus, and you'll find out. I'm working hard. I'm going to do my best to have copies at the Second Amendment March, the very first copies. So, you show up. Well, we are about out of time. But hey, check out 2amarch.com, Second Amendment March on Facebook. Get involved. Do what you can. We very much appreciate it. Also, don't forget our sponsors, firearmslegal.com slash Tactical. Protect your family against the injustices that can sometimes pop up in the criminal justice system. And also go to EleteFirearms.us, talk to Larry Jackson about buying the right gun for your family the first time. Well, okay, folks, that about wraps it up for this week's episode of the Home Defense Show. Until next week, remember your purpose in life is to find something greater than yourself and serve it. Always remember, God, family, country, in that order. It's important how you live, but it's equally important how you die. Your family and the ones you love need your protection, so train, always train, stay alert, stay alive. Until next week on the Home Defense Show, this is your host, Skip Coriel. God bless you, God bless your family, and God bless America. Thank you for joining us this week on The Home Defense Show. Now, get out there and protect the ones you love. We'll see you next week with more of the best in home defense. Bye-bye, boys! Have fun storming the castle!